Hi, it's uh, Monday, January 18th, 2016. Uh, I'd like to talk about uh, The Big uh, Short. Uh, it's a book written by Ma Michael Lewis, who has written a lot of other books uh, about finance. Uh, he wrote uh, Liar's Poker. That was uh, the uh, original uh, book by him. Um, and he wrote also uh, Flash Boys, A Wall Street Revolt, that came out uh, in 2014. Uh, the Biggest Short came, uh, was written in, and came out in 2010. And uh, I watched the, uh, the new movie that's come out, The Big Short. Uh, that came out on uh, December 15th in the U.S., which is interesting because it was the day before <laughs> the Fed uh, hiked rates. And uh, Wikipedia calls it an American biographical comedy drama. And uh, it's interesting to see that it cost $28 million to make the movie. And it's already grossed $70 million uh, in the box office, which is not bad for uh, a movie about finance. And I think, yeah, this movie is uh, worth watching. Um, I hadn't read the book. I read Liar's Poker uh, years ago. Michael Lewis is a good uh, writer. Um, but uh, basically, the big short is talking about uh, some hedge fund managers uh, from small funds back in 2005, 2006, who basically uh, saw the subprime uh, collapse coming. And uh, they were outsiders, so to speak. And they... Uh, they got the big uh, Wall Street banks to uh, write the credit default swaps for them on the mortgage-backed securities. And, um, yeah, it's really interesting uh, because one of the main characters uh, played by uh, Christopher Bale is uh, a guy called Michael Berry who was uh, running a hedge fund out of uh, California, I think San Jose. And... Uh, he went to uh, New York to uh, ask uh, the banks there, investment banks, to write, uh, to help him short the mortgage-backed securities because he, he went through it, through all the mortgage-backed securities and even all the mortgages within them, like with a fine tooth comb. And, uh, and he saw that it was like completely uh, fraudulent, the whole system. Uh, mortgage-backed security system, all the tranches they had, all the mortgage-backed securities was a pure fraudulent uh, uh, construct. And uh, But Wall Street, the uh, rating companies at the time, S&P, Moody's, uh, SEC, the Fed, they kind of uh, ignored that. I think they knew there was something wrong, but they just... You know, people were making too much money. So when uh, Michael Berry gets uh, to New York, he goes to Goldman Sachs and he uh, is meeting with the salespeople there and tells them what he wants to do. And they're like almost laughing at the guy. And then they uh, say, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll sell you five million of these uh, credit default swaps on the mortgage backed securities. And he said, oh, can you do uh, 200 million? And... Uh, one of the salespeople looks shocked and the other one says, yes, we'll do it. And then, you know, uh, he leaves the meeting and uh, you can see in the meeting room, the Goldman people are in there all laughing, you know, and like, you know, basically thinking this guy's a mug. We're going to make loads of money off him. Uh, and then he goes around the other uh, investment banks, Deutsche Bank, Morgan Stanley, uh, Lehman, Bear Stearns, and he buys more of this stuff. I think he bought uh, $1.3 billion uh, worth of it. Um, nominal amounts, of course. Uh, the OTC, they, they are OTC derivatives, after all. And then, uh, yeah, he's one of the main characters. There are other uh, characters who, uh, you know, one of them, Michael Baum, he runs a hedge fund related to Morgan Stanley, and he uh, finds out by accident that, uh, you know, this guy from uh, California has uh, shorted uh, the mortgage-backed security uh, market. 
because up until then, no one really knew how to short the housing market. And then he, he, he puts the trade on, but it, it shows you how, you know, he goes to Vegas for a secured mortgage-backed security uh, conference, and he does his homework. He sends his traders to Florida to look at the, you know, real estate market. One of them, uh, two of them go to this uh, house, and they knock on the door, and they say, uh, is this Mr. So-and-so? And, -so? and and the guy says, no, that's my uh, landlord's dog's name. <laughs> so the landlord of this house uh, got his uh, mortgage using his dog's name. And then the, the tenant says, well, is there a problem? You know, I, I've been paying him his rent every month. And then the uh, fund guy says, well, you know, he, he stopped making payments on his mortgage for the last six months. So it's a complete mess. So uh, they get in on the game and, uh, and you know, they, they buy the credit default swaps, you know, and, uh, and there's a couple of other younger guys who together with a retired banker who is played by Brad Pitt, they, uh, they get to short it as well. And, you know, and they're all seeing in this, you know, this is in 06, just before 07. And they're all seeing the fraud and all the, and they're like scratching their heads and saying, how can nobody see this, you know? And uh, Michael Bale, who plays, uh, Christopher Bale, who plays Michael Burry, his uh, investors are getting very, very, you know, like worried. And he has to, he almost, you know, he was getting sued by investors because they, they thought he was crazy, you know, what he was doing, you know, betting uh, against the, uh, the housing market. You know, they, they all heard uh, Bernanke and Greenspan saying that the uh, housing market never collapses uh, nationwide. It's only localized in the states, you know, and um, but, you know, Alan Greenspan, Ben Bernanke didn't do their homework like Michael Berry. So basically, you know, that's the story. You know, they, they these outsiders, these uh, small fund managers, they realize the whole financial system and the investment banks and the regulators and the central banks, you know, it's all a fraudulent uh, game. And, uh, you know, they almost, uh, you know, didn't make the money um, because the other thing this movie shows is that once the, in 07, when the uh, mortgage-backed security market and the subprime uh market started collapsing you know you would have thought these uh, credit default swaps they bought would have started moving up in value you know it's like you buy a put option the underlying goes down you know in, a, in an exchange market you know not otc the price is transparent you see the the put should be going up in value but these guys you know they're getting screwed by these uh banks like goldman and uh, morgan stanley and JP Morgan, you know, they're calling to get prices once everything started collapsing, you know, middle uh, of 07, beginning of 08, and their uh, credit default swaps weren't moving. They, it wasn't moving, you know, and, and, they, and then they realized as well that the banks, you know, were, were screwing them and that, the, you know, even uh, Michael Berry wrote to his investors and said, I have to say that, you know, the banks are fraudulent as well because they're manipulating these prices. But eventually, once uh, Goldman Sachs, for example, uh, was able to turn around their position and go uh, also short the mortgage-backed security market, like Michael Berry, their client, you know, once they were short, then they made a good, fairly good price for Michael Berry. And he said, oh, I see what you're doing. You, you had to, like get get out of your losing side and and you know put on the same trade as me so now you're making me a decent price so that's the other thing you know the system was fraudulent and these banks and the central bank as well because they were supposed to regulate them they were uh fraudulent as well you know they're trying to screw uh the, their clients because you know they sold them these products and uh, they were like mispricing them because they didn't want to lose the money. Uh, and worst of all, even when the subprime market was collapsing, they were c calling these funds and asking them for margin. 
you know, basically they wanted to like finish them so they wouldn't have to pay them. But eventually, you know, they got their comeuppance. But uh, it's funny because towards the end of the movie, it says, oh, and then all the banks were broken up. You know, the SEC was reformed. Uh, thousands of bankers were put in jail. And then it goes, oh, sorry, that's not true. Nothing like that happened. Uh, if anything, the banks were saved by the taxpayer. They got their bonuses. Uh, they've become bigger, uh, you know, the New York investment banks and the international investment banks as well. They've become bigger. There's been no reform. And uh, in my opinion, the biggest short yet to come will be the central banks. Because through QE, the central banks have saved, uh, you know, the investment banks. They've taken all the crap securities, the mortgage-backed securities, from these banks' balance sheet. And that's why they did QE. You know, that's why the Fed went from 800 billion in their balance sheet to now four and a half trillion. It's full of worthless crap, like mortgage-backed securities that were, uh, you know, securitized and then collapsed in 07, 08. So my uh, feeling is that nothing's been reformed. Uh, you know, the financial system is still fraudulent. Uh, the banks haven't been broken up. You know, CDOs as well, they talk a lot about that. And that's amazing, the CDOs. You know, it's just side bets and side bets on the mortgage-backed securities. And now on Wall Street, they call CDOs something else. I forgot the name, but they're still doing it. So in my opinion now, uh, the next, the biggest short of all time, if you want to call it that, will be the central banks because they've got all this crap in their balance sheet that is worthless. And uh, once the market, you know, finds out, and I think they're finding out, um, you know, that's the next biggest short. And you might ask, how do you short a central bank? Well, there's a very, very uh, simple way to short central banks, and that's to hold the asset that central banks hate the most, that's gold, uh, because it's the anti-central bank asset. Even though they hold a lot of gold, they hate it. You know, uh, John Brimlow, who uh, was at a meeting in 2015 where Paul Volcker was present, uh, said that uh, Paul Volcker kept saying at this meeting that gold was the enemy during his term at the, as the Federal, Federal Reserve. And he's still saying, you know, gold is the enemy. And there was also a comment from November 04 in the Nikkei Weekly. And uh, Paul Volcker says this, that day the United States announced that the dollar would be devalued by 10%. By switching uh, the yen to a floating exchange rate, the Japanese currency appreciated and the sufficient realignment in exchange rates was realized. Joint intervention in gold sales to prevent a steep rise in the price of gold, however, was not undertaken. That was a mistake. Well, he's talking about uh, back in 1973, just after a couple of years after uh, Bretton Woods collapsed and the uh, currencies uh, started floating. So, yeah, that's the best short. And the other... The biggest short, I think, is going to be of all time will be the central banks. And, you know, you, you basically have to hold physical gold or even silver outside the banking system because, yeah, that's where the action will be, in my opinion. Uh, and I think the last five years, it's a bit like, you know, the two, two years leading up to uh, the uh, subprime collapse where these guys put on these trades you know, to uh, short mortgage-backed security market and subprime. And uh, that market, you know, at one point started collapsing and their, uh, you know, credit default swaps didn't move at all because, you know, the banks were manipulating it. Eventually, they lost control and they had to get on the side of these funds. Um, but they still had to be bailed out. So... That's the same thing that's been happening to precious metals, but it's taken longer. They've been able to, you know, manipulate and frustrate people for 
four and a half years in gold and five years in silver. But eventually they're going to lose that battle, uh, in my opinion. Uh, so that, in my opinion, is the biggest short of all will be the central banks. And maybe Michael Lewis will write a book about that once it happens. Take care. Bye.